Growing up, I had a friend. His name is Osama. Now, when you hear the name Osama, I'm pretty sure most of you, there's only one image that comes to mind. Now, when you hear the word Bin Laden, most of you, most of you, <laughs> you know, Osama may be hit or miss, but Bin Laden definitely will bring that image to life. And let me tell you about the Osama that I knew, okay? And how this video idea even came about. Quick intro, okay? Now, the Osama that I've known is complete opposite of what Biladin is. You know what I mean? He is far from religious. He does not have a beard. I'm pretty sure he used to shave it. And he was popular with the ladies. All right? Now, Osama, just like me, is a very West-friendly person. Most people might forget that I'm from Arabia. Matter of fact, me and Osama Bin Laden are from the same city. But unfortunately, ever since um, the unfortunate events of September 11, the image of, I'm not going to say Muslims, but the, the Islamophobic image where people are scared, like, like you know, uh, even an Indian West, uh, even an Indian Sikh who is very far from Muslim, but he has a turban, so he'll get the same treatment as a, a, a perceived Muslim, you know? Ooh, you T word, I, 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 E. You know? Now, sure, Islamophobia is bad and all that, but. If you're a brown man in this world, <laughs> Muslim or not, that's just the reality you got to accept and learn to deal with, okay? As a man from where I'm from, having a name like mine, for example, like no matter how <laughs> cool I was, you know, westernized or whatever, I can't make certain jokes in the airport, for example. I happen to know a guy who was in Germany for a layover. And he had a keychain that resembled the AK-47, just a keychain. And, you know, while passing through the x-ray, for example, you know how he puts your keychain in a little box thing? And the German guy, TSA guy, the guy they, they were staring down on him. And uh, my boy thought he was funny and decided to make a joke. He didn't have a, you know, a good accent like mine, so... This is what he said. He said, Don't worry, it is not real. Ha 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 ha. They did not find that funny at all. As a matter of fact, he got to know what a cavity search is real quick. <laughs> All right. Uh oh. Anyway, ma, one has to stop and think, ma. Like, Osama bin Laden had kids. I heard that one of his kids has grown up and denounced his dad and said, he's not with it, okay? Matter of fact, he's not with that whole extremism stuff. He's trying to live it up. He's trying to pull up in that skirt, skirt with a baddie, all right? He's trying to turn up in a club, all right? He's trying to do what his dad would have called haram. He's human. But because of his dad's name, which tainted more than just the, the life of his kids, but the whole family, that most people would be shocked to know that Bin Laden came from a very, very rich family. So I decided to tell you about the Bin Laden family. The Bin Laden family is a wealthy and influential family from Saudi Arabia with vast businesses and business interests across the world. Okay. 
Of course, the most well-known family member, unfortunately, is Osama bin Laden, who became notorious for his involvement in the, you know what. But it's very important to note that the majority of the family, the bin Laden family, first of all, had no involvement, all right? They had no knowledge of his plans. On top of that, many of them came publicly and said, yeah, this boy don't represent us. They publicly denounced him and his actions. They stated they had no affiliation with him or his extremist beliefs. Holla. Yeah, they, they trying to get that money, man. They ain't with the... All right. But let me tell you a little more just so you know how rich they are. And this part really shocks people because it's hard to imagine your boy Osama land in a cave somewhere in Pakistan. You forget that his family owns skyscrapers. Do you understand what I mean by skyscrapers? Across countries in Sudan, when I was researching for Sudan, I remembered that they have the Bin Laden building, which is a skyscraper. The Laden family has a long history of business success, a long and known one amongst the Middle East and in some Western countries. You'd be surprised to find out that their company, the Saudi Bin Laden Group, okay, has been involved in numerous high-profile projects. Aside from a lot of skyscrapers in the West, okay, their portfolio includes the construction of some of the tallest buildings in the whole world. The Bin Laden family name is primarily known for their construction business, primarily. They got other businesses, but construction is their golden goose, is their goose that lays the golden eggs, all right? But it lays it every day, not just on Easter. Over the years, the Saudi Bin Laden group has been involved in a wide range of construction projects all across the Middle East. I'm talking anywhere in Asia, Africa, as I've mentioned, skyscrapers in Sudan. But they didn't just build skyscrapers. They also did roads, right? bridges, <laughs> airports, right? you name it. And of course, you know, high-rise buildings, if you want to call it that. You know, but uh, they rise pretty high, so I, I like to call them skyscrapers. If you ever been in Dubai's um, Burj Khalifa, that thing touches clouds. <laughs> Pretty high. The corporation or company has been involved in some of the most iconic construction projects in the Middle East, All right? such as the expansion of the Grand Mosque in Mecca which of course gains them a lot of respect from the whole Muslim population in Middle East or beyond, because this is like the holy site, you know. They work to expand it, make it bigger, you know, to sustain tourists and whatnot, visitors. They, their work wasn't limited to holy sites of Islam, all right? They were a business after all. That was just one that, you know, I'd say gained them respect and acknowledgement across the populations, all right? You know, participating in the Grand Mosque, that's legendary. But they did some crazy work as well, such as King Abdulaziz International Airport in Jeddah, all right? 
which I really never been to this airport. But um, y'all can look it up. I'm pretty sure it's good. I never seen it. I'm just guessing. But what I'll tell you is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Now that's a project you put on a portfolio. This building is huge, bruh. This is the tallest building in the world at the time of its completion. And if I Google real quick, I'm pretty sure it's the tallest building in the world as of 2023. So as of the 7th of May, 2023, I just Googled it real quick. Tallest building in the world. Guess what? It is still Burj Khalifa. They did that. Tallest in the world, bro. Construction is just the main chick for them. They got mistresses as well. The Bin Laden family has also been involved in other industries such as manufacturing, real estate, and agriculture. It's important to note that the Bin Laden family's business empire is vast and complex with many different companies and subsidiaries. All right? A bunch of companies and companies that own companies and companies that own companies that own companies. That own co- you get it. All right? But the Saudi Bin Laden group remains their most well-known, prominent business venture. In the aftermath of the 9-11 events, the Bin Laden family faced intense scrutiny, criticism, with many people questioning their connections to Osama and his terrorist activities. The family right away publicly disowned Osama. They disowned him, stating they had not been in contact with him for many years and condemning his actions. Now, it was hard to imagine for the world at that time that, you know, they wouldn't agree with him. But I tell you like this, bro, even though this was pre Salman era, Freedom of speech wasn't a thing, right? <laughs> the internet wasn't there yet to share, uh, you know, Saudi people to share how people are, you know? Not what the government tells you that people are doing. Never mind the rules and all the religious mumbo jumbo. People were people, bro. Most people didn't follow those stupid rules. All right? <laughs> It was no different. Now, I just imagine them sitting in the office handling business. Okay, we're we going to build this skyscraper. All right, cool. I'm going to hit Miami when we build this. We're going to spend some racks at the club. Ha, ha, ha. And boom, their distant cousin Osama is all over the news. And he doesn't only ruin the name for these couple guys. Oh, no. The whole country was at blame at one point. Saudi Arabia was blamed for funding 9-11. And, you know, I remember, even though I was young, but I do remember, post that event, the whole world had a whole different view of any brown man, beard or not, Muslim or not. It was the Islamophobia era. It didn't help that, you know, people in the kingdom couldn't really show you that, hey, you don't agree with that. You didn't have no freedom of speech, bro. It is what it is. Now, despite condemning his actions and disowning him, despite all that, The Bin Laden's family faced significant financial repercussions as a result of what happened. They got hit in their pockets. Many of their businesses got impacted. Many of their business ventures were affected. And some governments 
put sanctions or restrictions on their activities just for having that name. Additionally, some individuals and groups targeted the family with threats, attacks, leading many members to distance themselves from their family name. He ruined their family name just to have, bro. Now, overall, while the actions of Osama were undoubtedly horrific, it's important to remember that the vast majority, Matt, majority, everybody but Osama had no involvement or knowledge of his plans. The family got a complex history of business successes and controversy, but none of it had to do with T-word activity, extremism, and the reaction to Osama's actions was one of condemnation and disavowal. They disowned him straight up. But, you know, you try telling the world that when you got a Bin Laden last name <laughs> in a, you know, I love him post now. The reason I even chose this topic and a couple other topics you guys will see in the future is, again, most people, Arabia, Middle East, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't like them people, bro. They don't like T-word. And if we really going to play the blaming game on what happened, I ain't going to say too much, but you do your own research and figure out why Osama went out there in the first place. All right? And did Arabia fund it? They say no evidence? Well, you know, they, they was going to open up the ability to sue Arabia. But if y'all going to sue Arabia, y'all might as well sue Bush and them because, again, at one point in time, I'll tell you like this real quick before I go, because I'm not going to make a video about this. It's just not worth my time. But I'll tell you a fact you won't hear nowhere else. Boom. When I lived in Arabia, mind you, there was no freedom of speech, so you couldn't really even say this. All right? You can meet the sword if you start talking. But it was a building, and it was shut down. And it was called the Jihadi Training Center. Now, Arabia is super anti-terrorism and anti all that. And I'll give them that. They are. All right? Even though at the time, the king had the whole strict Wahhabist ideology, which is really not too different from an <laughs> Islamic state or whatever. You know, they're all kind of the same. Huh? But um, here's what I'm going to tell you. Arabia and USA, best buddies. That's why they covered up for each other nicely. And if you dig back in history, because that building, again, you weren't allowed to talk about it. It was just there. It was closed. That's it. You just don't speak about it. No, Nobody got the... Nobody want their head chopped, so they just. But looking back at it, now I understand why that building existed. And if you figure out, if you look back in history, on why Osama went out there in the first place, you know, Osama being a rich dude, why did he go to the jungle of Pakistan in the first place? How did that, how did he make the jump from the normal person Osama to that? Right? Well, there was a civil war. There was a little war. Um, if I'm not mistaken, in Afghanistan, which turned into a proxy war of, you know, Arabia, uh, of USA and Russia. And at, again, Arabia and U.S. are best friends, at least at the time. So Arabia said, hey, okay, we, 
we'd be hopping in with you. Here's a couple men. But the way Arabia markets army and fighting for that, they come at you with the religious uh, uh, point of view. So if I had to guess, because they did it again in Yemen, you know, and, and whenever they go to war, whenever they beef it, they tell the Saudi citizen things like um, in Arabic, وَطَنْ لَا نَحْمِيهِ which means a nation we don't protect, we don't deserve to live in. And, you know, not to mention the music, which I love, even though I never want to, uh, no, but the music is fire. It all helps to, you know, <laughs> give you this idea that you're fighting for your country, you're a hero, you know, and jihad, which even the word jihad got tainted <laughs> by these crazy motherfuckers. But jihad in its essence means you can look up the word on its own. But this is pre-9-11. This is way before that. So that word was then used often by the propaganda machine. And when again, when they got to go to war, so they be looking like, hey, yo, Bush, I got you, bruh. And they go over there, turn the machine on. You're going to be a hero. You're going to fight for your people. And Osama, you know, being a kid at the time, Osama, I guess he had the money, but he didn't have that uh, accomplishment of his own, maybe. He was missing that. So he wanted to be a hero. And they hit him with the religious aspect. He went with it. He fell for y'all. But when he went out there and things got bad, you know, just like you try to hide it with Julian, <laughs> right? And then, you know, when the, when, the, when the deed is done, everybody's like, oh, I don't know him. Who told you to do that? Osama found himself in that predicament. He was stuck out there. All of a sudden, he wasn't publicly a hero. He was an enemy. And he was stuck with a bunch of crazy traumatized. So if we really get down to it, all right, let's not do the blaming game. I just want to show you a different side. Because back then I could never show it. And it got me thinking, because my boy Osama, he don't got nothing to do with this stuff. But just the name probably got him, you know, living in a, in a you know, being named Osama ain't easy out here in these streets. <laughs> Let alone Bin Laden. Like, you can build the Burj Khalifa, tallest building to this day, 2023. But Osama effed it up for you. So now you got you to gotta use a middle name or some right? nickname, stage name. I don't know. It is what it is, man. Hit like, smash subscribe. Let me know if you like these um, Saudi stuff. Um, it's not the typical topic. You know, people will cover a lot about Osama's life, but... I just wanted to give you a fair view because, again, <laughs> scrutiny or not, they do own skyscrapers in America to this day. And they do business with America, government and uh, private sector. To the people involved, they know who they are. It's just the common people, they hear the word Bin Laden and think, oh, no. Nah, bro. All right. Bin Laden is a huge family. You might know a guy whose last name is Jackson. Where you from? You know, cool dude, cool. But obviously, he is not, you know, close with Michael Jackson just because they got the last name. Bin Laden is a huge family. There's a lot of Bin Ladens that don't know each other. Maybe he was closer to the richer, uh, you know, it is what it is, but it's just the last name. And 
this is of course with all my respect to the victims, but I can't be the only one that doesn't see the irony in him hitting a skyscraper and his family being the people that build skyscrapers. I can't be the only one that noticed that. Did it have an effect on his decision? I don't know. I don't want to try to dig in. I'm just here to tell you about the family and I'm out. I wonder how his kids are doing. <laughs> Imagine trying to be in at the club. Like, hey, you know where my dad is? Hey. <laughs>